I love food and I love to eat. But food's much more than just a physiological input. More than just nourishment for our bodies. It's one of the social fundamentals for our culture. I want to talk a little bit about how the many ways food can be a primary cultural motivator for us. The first one is something I think we're all familiar with. The office potluck. <laughs> we love our potlucks, don't we? They can be broken down, you know, into stages. Stage one, the sign-up sheet. <laughs> potluck, God's coming to you on Monday. Hey, Matt, potluck on Friday. Go ahead and sign up. No, thanks. I'm not interested in this week. I wasn't asking. <laughs> so everyone has to concede to participate. So they have to get competitive. That's stage two, the build-up. What are you bringing to the potluck Friday? I'm bringing chicken wings. You're bringing chicken wings? Well, I'm bringing Swedish meatballs. You're bringing Swedish meatballs? Well, I'm bringing lobster Newburg. <laughs> You're bringing lobster Newburg? I'm bringing beef Wellington. <laughs> By the time Friday comes around, no one knows how to make what they say they were going to make. They can't afford the ingredients. And if the first two requisites were met, they still didn't have the time or the effort it would take to actually put it together. So come Friday, instead of Swedish meatballs, chicken wings, beef wellington, and lobster Newburgh, we all show up, and what is there? Four plastic boxes of Safeway cookies! <laughs> How did you work through those analytics at the Save Mart, you know? I said I was going to bring Chinese chicken salad, but these mini chocolate brownie bites pretty much have the same flavor profile anyway, so I'm just going to bring these. <laughs> what are we so excited about with these potlucks, right? Show up Friday. Cold nacho cheese. Room temperature deviled eggs. Enough salt to de-ice Alaska. I swear, you could walk through the Sahara and drink the Pacific Ocean simultaneously while licking sandpaper. You will not be as thirsty as you are after an office potluck. <laughs> and that brings us to the next stage. Because even after we shove 5,000 calories down our mouth to celebrate Arbor Day or whatever other arbitrary thing we're talking about, <laughs> you have to have dessert, right? Matt, did you have dessert? Matt, did you have dessert? Myrtle made a cheesecake. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> yeah, I think I do. Triple bypass surgery and the need to be defibrillated by 3 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> uh, psh, Rampart, uh, this is Unit 11. We have a chicken wing overdose down at the Les Schwab on Main. Uh, we need an IV drip in celery and carrots right away. Claire! <laughs> food, man. That's, that's the problem with potlucks and things like that. Man, I eat too much, and I've always struggled with my weight. And, and that's a big problem in this country, in the Western world in general. We're under an obesity epidemic. Right? An obesity epidemic. Why do we say that? Like it's a virus or a bacteria. If it really works like that, c can you catch being large? <laughs> that's an epidemic. Hey, Matt, how's it going today? Oh, man, don't touch me. I'm really robust today. You do you do not want to catch any of this largesse going down over here. <laughs> it's an epidemic, man. Can you call in big? <laughs> right? right, call in big. You know, we all done that. We want to take that mental health day. We want to convince our boss we're sick. So we call in sick. We throw in that little fake cough while we're on the phone, right, to convince them you're sick. <laughs> oh, boss, I'm <coughs> sick today. Well, I can hear you coughing on the phone, so trust, you're fine. Take a guilt-free day. I know you're sick. Well, to call in large, what you do is go get yourself a bucket of KFC chicken. I recommend the extra crispy for this application. The audio is much more effective. <laughs> call the boss. Hey, boss, I'm <laughs> big today. Most of you will know that audio from the Hanna-Barbera Scooby-Doo uh, shows, the Scooby-Doo bite. Remember, he'd make a giant sandwich, look like an accordion, switch it down to a half inch, and <laughs> Do that, and you will convince your boss that you are large and you cannot come in. <laughs> Man, it's hard. C restaurant menus starting to car carry calorie counts so people can be more health conscious in their choices. That's a problem for me, though, because I'm one of the first generations to grow up with uh, video games from a very young age, from the Atari 2600 all the way up. So I see any number posted anywhere as a high score to be beaten. So I end up using the menu for the opposite of its intention. 
I'm looking at this thing and wow, it's okay, wow, blue cheese bacon burger, 1,250 calories. What a, what a doozy. Wait, what's this? The Widowmaker. <laughs> Two patties, four slices of cheese, slick slices of bacon, a fried egg, crispy onion strings, ranch dressing, ancho chili sauce, avocado, on a brioche bun, deep fried in tempura, wrapped in a quesadilla, and served with honey dipping sauce. <laughs> that, honey, that is not a burger. That is gross negligence. Does it come with your own cardiologist? I'm getting it. Sometimes food and language can intersect, right? Trying to learn Spanish, practice it for a while. And I always have my frat boy friends come up and they always say the same, same old jokes, right? Hey, bro, I know uh, Spanish too. Taco, burrito, enchilada, right? They start telling the foods like they're really funny, you know? A real Rosetta Stone, right? <laughs> More like a Rosetta Stoner, if you know what I mean. <laughs> then he says, Enchirito. I said, hold on there, home slice. And Chirito was actually conceived by the Taco Bell Corporation, which was actually the genesis of a Southern California man. It's an American company, so technically Enchirito is English. <laughs> they don't serve Enchiritos in Mexican restaurants. Trust me. I've tried. I've tried up to three times, and, and by the third time I actually ordered an Enchirito, I got a very... Uh, concerned reaction from the waiter. He said, I gringo! No hay encerito en restaurante mexicano. No hay encerito en comida mexicano. No encerritos in Mexican restaurants. No encerritos in Mexican food at all. At which point I said, sir, senor, I apologize for my social faux pas. I'd like to put this transgression behind us, so let's just let bygones be bygones. And please bring me a Crunchwrap Supreme. Thank you so much. <laughs>